Next on BYU Sports Nation, the day after National Signing Day, our takeaways on the newest Cougar footballers. Gavin Baxter and Nick Emery are coming off of big performances last weekend. What are our expectations for those two as the Cougars face the Pilots in Portland? Plus, it's Kids Day for BYU women's basketball. One of the biggest kids, Spencer Linton, joins us live from the Marriott Center. Let's go. This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now live from Studio B, your hosts, Jason Shepard and Lauren McClain. BYU Sports Nation is live, everybody. We are your day-to-day play-by-play right here in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Today is Thursday, February 7th. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Jason Shepard, teamed up with a person who signed a letter of intent for two Lauren McLean. Yes, I think we did the math, and it was like 2036 by the time my little guy could sign at BYU. But if we're talking about me, I really feel like I could add some depth uh, with my current physique to the <laughs> offensive line. I, I was meaning to talk to Jeff Grimes yesterday. You're like, Say, coach, you know. Coach. I'm, I'm... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on the same eating schedule. <laughs> As those offensive linemen, and really, I feel like I could do some damage. You, know, you can never have too many hogs. This conversation makes me uncomfortable because <laughs> I'm not sure that I'm even allowed to comment. How do you respond? <laughs> I don't think I have the right to even comment. You know so. what? Feel free to move on. I'm just saying, throwing it out there, Jeff Grimes, we don't have a, an offensive line coach yet. So it's true. May- it's got to be Jeff Grimes. Maybe, yeah, maybe. You never know. You never know. Here's coming up on today's show, our takeaways, as we mentioned from yesterday's signing day. That's coming up in What's Trending. Lots of interesting stuff from yesterday. We obviously had all the coaches and coordinators uh, right here in Studio B. You talked with quite a few mm-hmm. uh, position players or position coaches. Yep. Even talked with Zach Wilson. We'll, you'll hear from Zach coming up in just a few minutes as well. Plus, as I mentioned, Spencer Linton. And I think in the open, I went ultra Utah and said Linton. Linton. Uh, but Spencer Linton, Linton, Linton will join us from the Marriott Center coming up in about 15 minutes. We'll get his thoughts on signing day we'll talk about BYU basketball's matchup in Portland tonight plus we'll preview the women's game versus St. Mary's which you'll be able to see right here on BYU TV immediately following BYU Sports Nation we now proudly present today's BYU Sports Nation headlines BYU football signed four athletes yesterday on National Signing Day, adding to the 14 players that the Cougars signed in December. Among the new signees yesterday were athlete Luke Andrada, defensive end Cade Albright, running back Javel Brown, and defensive back Dimitri Gallo. In case you're wondering, BYU's 2019 recruiting class ranked 100th in the nation, according to Rivals.com. Men's basketball will play on the road tonight against Portland Pilots, who are currently 0-9 in WCC play. The game will be broadcast on ESPN2 at 11 p.m. Eastern time, and pregame coverage will begin at 10 p.m. Eastern time on BYU Radio with this guy to my right. That's right. Looking forward to it. BYU women's basketball playing St. Mary's today at 1 p.m. Eastern time in the Marriott Center. The Cougars 9-2 in the conference looking to snap a two-game losing streak. You can watch the game live on BYU TV immediately following BYU Sports Nation. Number seven men's volleyball lost their first match of MPSF conference play to number five Pepperdine last night in Malibu. Despite 13 kills from Gabby Garcia Fernandez, it's Puerto Rico. (laughs) The wave swept the Cougars 25-17, 25-19, 25-18. The Cougars will try to end their three-game losing streak against MPSF foe number four UCLA on Saturday. How surprising is that? Not just that they're losing, but they're getting swept. We just don't see that from men's volleyball. Especially when you beat Ohio State. Yeah. at the top of yeah. your schedule and then yeah you rarely see them lose back to back yeah that's games. real it's really surprising all rise and shout it's time for what's trending you're talking about it and so are we it's what's trending on BYU Sports Nation as we mentioned a moment ago, BYU signed a total of 18 players for the class of 2019. Now, 14 of those signed during the early signing period in December, and then the four players that signed yesterday. Lauren, what was your takeaway from BYU signing day? Uh, I had a lot of takeaways, but one of the main ones that we've kind of talked about was the message from the coaches, especially Kalani Satake, is that they want guys to be here that want yep. to be here. You know, they want guys that want to play at BYU and have that spirit of BYU. And I think they did a good job with the signees that they brought in. Obviously, they're, they're not going to waste any scholarships on that. But one thing I found interesting was how much the coaches, especially Kalani Satake, talked about the preferred walk-ons. He almost wouldn't talk about the signees 
without talking about the walk-ons as well. So what better guys that want to be with BYU than the walk-ons, right? They are giving up uh, scholarships. Yeah, in some cases they are, yeah. In some of these places to come to BYU and be a walk-on. Kalani Satake said a little bit more about that yesterday. I mean, all these young men have turned down scholarships to other places. And... Um, you know, we, we've had a, a really great success rate with with uh, players that have been walk-ons, and um, I feel like the, the, some of those have slipped through the through our fingers when we could have just brought them on campus and shown the benefits of being here. And yeah, Kalani also mentioned that I think they get 53 official visits, and they use more of those on on walk-ons this year. So they're really hitting that hard. And BYU does a good job of bringing in those kids that have the heart, that have the desire, and they're athletes. They maybe not don't have the stars right. next to their name that, that some of these signees have. But, I mean, you got Taylor's as old as time. You got Chad Lewis. You got Dennis Pitta, Lee Johnson, and uh, Ziggy Ansah. You know? So I, I'm excited to see which of these guys that they bring in. We can't really mention their names yet. Which one they're going to bring in um, that can – contribute and be maybe one of those guys in the future. Well, and, and Kalani, when he was on with Spencer and I yesterday during that interview, he mentioned, you know, like, if, if I'm only going out from a recruiting perspective and I'm only recruiting guys that, that are going to get scholarships, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it right. I've got extra, I've got this, this full number of scholarships, I think 125, yeah. you know, and so you've got, you've got the opportunity to be able to get these players that really want to be there. And, and that's one of the things that stood out to me was the message. Guys that want to be here, those are the guys they want to go after. And, and here's the other thing that, that stands out. And, and this, this is something I think BYU has, has always believed, but it seems to be coming to the forefront more and more. BYU has certain standards, and the Cougars aren't running from that. In, in fact, they're embracing it. The standards, and I'm talking about both on and off the field and in the classroom, mm-hmm. they are high. BYU's not going to apologize for that, and they're not going to take less than that. There are fantastic athletes that want to come and play at BYU. The coaches are looking for the players who can play at the highest level and want the BYU experience. I think that's a really important thing to remember when you're talking about BYU recruiting. BYU has standards. Those aren't changing, and they want people that want to come in and embrace those. The other thing, real quick, just the early signing period, it, it did give yesterday a little bit different feel because you're, you're so used to having everybody on one day when you had the bulk. And I actually think it's a good thing that you have for coaches, especially because you can have the majority of your class locked up in December mm-hmm. and you don't have to worry about some of those last minute ones. But I, it, it just definitely was a different feel yesterday than normally you have a, a, a signing day. Well, definitely. We, we only saw four guys right. sign yeah. yesterday, but we got to highlight the return missionaries, which is going to be huge. People that we'll see contribute immediately. So as we kind of talked about before, I, I interviewed Zach Wilson yesterday. So he didn't sign early, but it's weird to think about that it's been a year since his signing period. But he enrolled in school early, right. so it almost felt like he was part of the team early on. But uh, I had an exclusive interview with him yesterday. The only one. You were the only one. <laughs> only one. If anyone doesn't know what exclusive means, <laughs> it means no one in the world got that interview but me. <laughs> but he was uh, talking about that day, but mostly about the new accessory he had attached to his arm. Yeah, it's just a little uh, high school problem I had. Uh, been bugging me for a couple years. Um, I figured I should try and get it fixed now before this next season, just better now than, than waiting. So I wanted yeah. to be ready by this next season, so I figured it in January before next season comes. So so what's your recovery plan like? Yeah, so just hitting rehab every day. I'll be training with John Beck and stuff down in, in California, um, just re-strengthening the arm, stuff like that. But I should be back by summertime. Um, sometime just depending on how things go, how my mobility comes back, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it shouldn't be a too big, 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 big of a deal. I mean, my shoulder wasn't nearly as bad as a lot of guys that we've seen or, you know, Drew Brees and stuff like that. So uh, I should be able to recover well. Oh, yeah. If it's not as bad as Drew Brees, you're good to go. So you want to be back by summertime. What are your plans for spring ball? What do you plan to do during that time? Yeah, just mentally, you know, come and check with everything and, and be a part of the team in the huddle and with the coaches, make sure I'm still watching film, coming up with Utah and, and like the game plan and making sure I have an input of what I want to be done or whatever the thing is and making sure I'm, you know, helping out my receivers and getting on getting our connection of whatever it is that we can do off the field, whether it's I can't throw for a while. So, yeah. um, you know, we'll have to make that kind of stuff up eventually, but just kind of you know, helping out as much as I can in, in spring ball. Ship, after listening to that, do you think that Zach Wilson will be slinging it or slinging it come July? Look, I think he'll be slinging it. And by that, I mean throwing the football come <laughs> July. So cheesy. Like, I, 
Let's go. we got to give that one to our producer. Yeah, ben I know. We got, we're going to throw. I feel like we have. If to anyone tell feels that's way too cheesy, we're that. putting it all on the plate of Ben Bagley. <laughs> uh, look, BYU in, is not putting Zach out in front of everyone to talk about things if there's a big issue. Yes, it's surgery. I mean, surgery, you never want to mess around with surgery. But by all accounts and from Zach's own mouth, you just heard it. Things went well. The damage could have been a lot worse. And, and he fully expects to be ready. And, and if the reports that he may actually be able to throw the football harder now are more accurate, look out. So, yeah, I mean, I expect him to be ready for fall camp. I, I can't even imagine Zach Wilson throwing harder than what I saw from him last season. I feel like the receiver's going to have to wear, like, boxing gloves. So, what you're telling me, the case. You're t- we're talking about a quarterback that in his last game did not throw an incompletion. And yeah. you're saying he He's may be able to be more 18. accurate and throw the football <laughs> harder. That's, okay. That's inhuman. That's okay. inhuman. I'll which, take that. Which probably makes sense why everyone was really freaked out when he walked out on that basketball court last week with a sling on his right. arm. But I agree with you. I think he'll be slinging the football Come July, when I listened to that again, though, he did. He had a little bit of like, I should be back. Right. You know, he, he wasn't like, I will be back by July. I think he has realistic expectations. I'm sure he's been talking to a lot of doctors and trainers. and uh, But that guy has so much confidence. He has so much confidence. He's worked, he's worked way too hard to get here and to not put in the time necessary. And it's nice to know he's had it since high school. You know, I mean, it's, it's, so it can't be that big of a deal. He played an entire year with it. Also, he mentioned he's working with John Beck. And if you're working with John Beck, magic happens on and off the field. <laughs> you know, it just does. It yeah, just this does. I, it's again, it's surgery. In in you know the only the only simple surgery is you know surgery on somebody else, but it's still something that I, I fully expect him to be ready to go. This is a, this first of all, we know the work ethic that he has. Mm-hmm. He's going to be one of those guys that's going to put in the work. He mentioned the, the mental reps during spring. He may not be able to throw it, but he's going right. to go through all the mental reps. He, I, I'm, I'm really excited to see what he can do when he's able to get back out there and throw the football. Yeah, and he said he's going to have to make up that time with his receivers, and I think he'll do it. And Shep, you best believe Zach Wilson knows how many days he has until he needs to be 100% healthy. Hit it! Countdown to the youths. I, I wanted to drag it out. Okay. Because okay. I, I wanted to one up German Spencer. It's just <laughs> it's very nice. Like 203 you. days. By the time we hit next week, we're going to be in the, uh, in the 100s. It's getting yeah. closer. It's, yes. it's getting closer. Uh, switching gears a little bit to basketball, the women's team is at the Marriott Center today. That means that the men's team is on the road. And it's actually kind of one of those weird weeks for the men. They're on the road for one game tonight in Portland. They'll be home on Saturday night, but they're in Portland to face the Pilots. Cougars coming off a a nice second-half performance against LMU, getting the win. Big story, Gavin Baxter scoring a career-high 25 points and getting the 10 rebounds in his first start. Plus, Nick Emery finished with 17 points, including 5 of 5 from 3. To expect that from both, though, Lauren, is probably asking a lot. So with that in mind, what are your realistic expectations for Baxter and Emory tonight in Portland? I feel like BYU needs a third guy, a a third offensive threat. And do I think that Gavin Baxter is going to go off for 25 points and 10 rebounds every night? No, I don't. Or that Nick Emery is going to shoot five for five from the three. But I think they are making strides, both of them. Talking about Gavin Baxter specifically, He had to, he recently came home from his mission. He has to acclimate. You and I both serve missions. We didn't come home and we're like, you know what? I'm in peak physical condition. I am mentally ready to tackle the world. And no, you're in, you're in your own world and tack on top of that, a division one athlete and all the pressures that come with that. So I feel like Gavin Baxter is kind of just getting over that hump and Tim Lacombe, the assistant coach said earlier this week that Gavin is now just reacting instead of thinking too much. And I really like that because when you're thinking too much, you're not letting your natural abilities shine through. You know, you're, you're focusing too much on what you need to do. But Gavin Baxter, if what we saw at LMU is him reacting, his dunks, his hustle plays, you know, his rebounds, I feel like I have high expectations. I don't, I don't feel like 25 points and, and 10 rebounds, but I feel like he could get close to a double-double. And Nick Emery, he's been through a ton. Yeah, He's been to a, a, through a ton, but he knows how to be successful breaking records his freshman season. And uh, I can't imagine, you know, his confidence level after what he's been through the last couple of years. But I feel like going for five for five from the three probably helps his confidence. And and I think that he's going to contribute a lot. Yeah, I mean, and if you think about it, when you look back at that game, the other storyline besides the fact that those two players played the way they did 
It was the fact that BYU was able to get that win with guys like Yoli and TJ not scoring their average, which actually brings us to our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. BYU basketball has been led in scoring by someone other than TJ or Yoli in just two games this season. And ironically Great. enough, it was the first one and the last one. Nevada was the first one where Jasheer Hardnett had 17, and then obviously Gavin Baxter against LMU with 25. It just doesn't, it, at least this season specifically, it just hasn't happened very much where the high score on the team wasn't named Yoli or TJ. And I fully expect both those guys to bounce back tonight, including what you get from, from Gavin and, and Nick. But in terms of expectations for both these guys, while I'm like you, I'm not expecting 25 and 10 from Gavin, yeah. I'm at the point now where I do expect double-digit scoring and at least seven rebounds. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's in such a rhythm and a groove right now that I, I don't think that's difficult for him to get at all. He's playing so well right now, and he's only scratched the surface of how good he can be. As for Nick, I, I just need to see more consistent numbers before I have a better idea of what to expect. Mm -hmm. I certainly think the performance against LMU would be a major confidence booster from him. So hopefully he can take that mantle of being that instant offense off the bench and really run with it. Um, he did start the second half. We'll see if there's maybe any maneuvering with that down the road. But certainly a confidence builder for Nick to have that type of performance. And I'm excited to see what this team does against a team that BYU should absolutely beat. Portland's 0-9. They're winless yeah. in conference play. But BYU, they're hungry. They're hungry. They are hungry. BYU has, has dominated this series. They're 19-2 and all-time against Portland. So, I mean, this, this definitely should be a BYU victory. And I'm curious to see what these guys do. Well, you know that Portland, for sure, has now scouted out Gavin Baxter. Like, sure. they're, they're going to they're gonna put a, a little more pressure on him than probably LMU did, you know, in the second half of last game, and which might take a little bit of pressure off Yoli. It absolutely should take pressure off Yoli. But also, Portland saw what LMU shut down Yoli Childs, where he only had six points. Yeah double teaming him the whole time they might do that again which might open the doors for Gavin Baxter I'm actually excited to see what's gonna happen yeah this will, this will be a fun one tonight again you can listen to it on BYU radio I'll have pregame coverage beginning at 10 p.m. Eastern time uh, tip off on, at 11 Eastern it's time to get our question of the day let's hear from you the voice of the nation this is the voice of the nation on BYU sports nation our question of the day, what is your takeaway from BYU's football signing day? First response in from at Twiggy or Stone. Sounded like a solid group to me. It's, it always is a bit of speculation, but I like the direction that the program is headed. I also like the idea of adding as many preferred walk-ons as possible. Never know when the next Chad Lewis might arrive. That's and that's, right, what, and, and that's right. what you were talking about. Yeah. I mean, a, a major emphasis beyond just getting the guys that are going to be on scholarship is to get these other guys that can certainly contribute and that want to be here. And, and it, like I said, we, we can't mention their names, yeah. but e even talking to the position coaches, they said, we can't wait to get those preferred walk-ons here. They must have spent a lot of time on those, honestly. You know, a lot of time in those guys' homes and then bringing them here. And it's, it's paid off. So they're, they're probably really good athletes coming in. I'm excited. Uh, at Cougarstat says, I'm looking forward to a show in 2026 where Spencer and Jerem analyze how well this recruiting class <laughs> panned out. It yeah, does take it. a while. It's for, true. It does take a while for the bulk of these guys, especially with missions and everything, to, uh, to come back and actually get on the field and, and see what you have. You can join in on the uh, question of the day. Don't forget, use the hashtag BYUSN. You can chime in on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Coming up, Zach Wilson may be in a sling now, but what's the chance he is ready to go by fall camp? And are Spencer Linton and Kristen Kozlowski ready for Kids Day? We're going to ask Spencer <laughs> Linton. He's going to join us from the Marriott Center coming up next. Look, there's all the kids right there. Look this your ears. is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Women's basketball hosts St. Mary's today at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Watch the game live on BYU TV immediately following BYU Sports Nation. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. As soon as I'm done with the show, I'm heading over there for sidelines. It's going to be fun. Welcome back in Studio B. We are your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. Jason Shepard alongside the lovely Lauren McLean. Thank you. 
Listen to BYU Sports Nation on demand by downloading the BYU Sports Nation podcast, or you can watch the show by going to BYUSN.com and experience BYUSN whenever you want. Our question of the day, playing off of BYU signing day yesterday, what was your takeaway from BYU football signing day? At Laser Sheep says, Laser Sheep. Not many kids from Utah was something that stuck out to me. That isn't good or bad necessarily, just caught my attention. Hmm. Well, the offensive linemen, I believe they signed were from Utah. That's kind of a... a Well, they, they, yeah, I mean, they've got, this is the thing about college now. I mean, it used to be so regional. Right. And and it's just not that way anymore. Certainly, you're going to get a lot more players from the state that you are in than outside. But yeah, it's, I mean, far reaching. and Everybody has their own regions where they go out and, and recruit. Obviously, BYU gets a lot of kids from California and are starting to make Texas. inroads in Texas, that kind of stuff. Yep. So, yeah, what's your takeaway from BYU football signing? That is our question of the day. You can join in using the hashtag BYUSN on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Joining us now from the Marriott Center is a familiar face. Spencer Linton and Kristen Kozlowski will be on the broadcast of today's women's basketball game. Spencer Linton now joins us from the Marriott Center. Hello, Spencer. Oh, it's just a fabulous morning, and it's great to be with both of you. <laughs> Look, now, if this, if uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this is now two kids' days for you in a matter of, what, two weeks? I, I'd be okay if we did it, uh, like, once a month, Jason. I mean, the, the <laughs> shrilling, this is happy shrilling. There are different types of shrills. We established this last time during the gym, uh, right before the gymnastics meet. This is, this is a happy thing. And both of these teams love the energy that is brought into the Marriott Center, and typically... That's reflected in, in how they play. And so I, I like it. I think it's fun. I think it's great for the, the community. And I, I know that this is a growing tradition for Jeff Judkins and for Guard Young in gymnastics. And I wouldn't be surprised to see some other sports get into this, whether it be volleyball, softball. I, I think it's a great program, great idea to bring energy uh, to some of the Olympic sports for BYU. Of all of the women's games that we do, it is by far my favorite. Like you mentioned, the energy, just the atmosphere, it's its great. I can't wait to get over there uh, when the show is done and just kind of experience that because you're right. I, and I, I know of, of a couple of media members who have already planned on bringing their earplugs. Yeah. So it yeah. gets you, that you loud. You can already hear the buzzing. Yeah, you They're can. not even screaming yet, and I, I can hear behind you the loud, high-pitched voices. As soon, and it's as, they start, as soon as they start playing Rihanna and Justin Bieber <laughs> and One Direction go, and, for, and Frozen, Frozen, Disney yeah. classics, <laughs> it's over, okay? you yep. Just don't try and have a conversation of any import with anybody for like an hour after the event because you probably can't hear it. <laughs> your, your ears are going to have to recover a little bit. You'll only be able to hear your children and dogs. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> What's that dog whistle? <laughs> So, Spencer, uh, we had a a very enjoyable day yesterday uh, talking to the BYU football coaches about signing day. What were your takeaways from yesterday's event? Well, I think you and Lauren hit on it in that opening segment of, whoa, there's a lot of emphasis on the quality of non-scholarship player that BYU is trying to bring in. The real question for me is, why? Why did BYU spend so much time focusing on these preferred walk-ons because I think we're we're all wondering, well, why not go after the five stars and and the four stars? Clearly, the story that BYU is telling is we need guys that are all in, and that means on the honor code, on academics, on wanting to be at BYU because if they're not, then there's a good chance they're not going to make it through their entire BYU career. They don't want to lose guys. They don't want people to leave early. They don't want people to drop out because academics are too hard or they're not, I guess, in with the honor code. So that is a big part of it. But when it comes to on the field play, if you look at practice and the quality of the scout squads and over the past few years, the talent level hasn't been exactly where BYU wanted it or needed it to be. And you say, okay, well, why is that such a big deal? Because the scout squad and the guys that are prepping the first teamers for those games are the ones that are going to help them prepare for what they're going to see with right. the Pac-12 opponents. So they need that practice squad to be better. And this is why you're seeing this huge emphasis on these preferred walk-ons is they need the scout teams to step up and present a tougher challenge day in and day out in practice. And, and that almost puts a little bit more pressure on the guys, the scholarship guys that actually did sign. 
You know, they, yeah, if they're being absolutely. compared to these preferred walk-ons, the desire in the heart of these guys, they have to do that and more, right? So that being said, which signee do you expect to make the biggest impact right away? Well, I'm actually going to go with a return missionary, if you will allow me the pleasure of doing we will so. Allow it. We'll and allow I think it. it's Jackson McChesney, who was a dynamite high school player, local product uh, from the Alpine area, about 25 minutes north of Provo. He's a guy that can do a lot of different things for the Cougars. So he gets off of his mission in a few months, and he's the type of player that can come in and, from what I've been told, has taken care of himself while he's been on his mission trip and is ready to assume the duties of special teams, running back, wide receiver. He wants to be a utility guy. I think he's going to make an impact for BYU football this season coming off of that two-year mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Jas Jackson McChesney, mark it down. He's going to be a guy that the Cougars rely on come the fall. We have video proof and audio proof that, uh, <laughs> that you've made that prediction. We will, we will revisit this. <laughs> The BYU basketball team, they're in Portland tonight, a, a one-game road trip before coming home Saturday for another home game. The story of BYU's last game was the play of Gavin Baxter and Nick Emery. We were talking about realistic expectations for them tonight. What are, what are your expectations for both of those guys tonight? Well, it's tough to know what those players are going to do on the road. We saw Gavin Baxter show up a little bit at Pepperdine and still waiting for Nick Emery to assume his full role that we saw when he had just a dynamite freshman season. But I will say this, the trend for Nick Emery specifically is starting to show itself on a more regular basis. He, there are just movements that he has with his body and with his arms and different things that he will try and do when he's dribbling the ball or passing the ball, the swagger. And you can start to see that come back more and more consistently five for five from the three-point line has only happened I think three times in the Dave Rose era Nick Emery just did it last game so yeah that'll help the the shooting confidence but it's all of his movements with the ball away from the ball the swagger that Nick Emery brought to the floor as a freshman and in a lot of his sophomore season that that's starting to return and so it's it's been a little bit of a slower build and I think slower than we anticipated but maybe that was unfair and honestly, I think it was unfair of us to expect Nick to just jump right back in and be the guy nine games in. And he's, he's starting to show with his body language, that swagger, those movements, that, that he's back. And so I, I don't know how that's going to manifest itself in terms of points and rebounds. I'll tell you this much, he's going to play hard-nosed defense. He's going to get more minutes against Portland tonight. And he's shooting with more confidence. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Nick go for 12 points four rebounds three or four assists but I expect him to make another defensive impact as far as Gavin Baxter goes it's going to be hard to top 25 points and 10 rebounds that might be one of his best performances as a BYU Cougar I that I, when you go for 25 and 10 that's uh that's another level so uh Portland's going to be more aware of where he is on the floor but they're not going to ignore Yoli Child so can Gavin take the energy that is easier to find here in the Marriott Center when there is a big crowd and people get excited about dunks. Can he take that and manufacture some of that on the road in the Child Center? And, and you want to talk about a stark contrast of what he played in front of last week compared to what he's going to see tonight? Couldn't be any more different. I hope there's 2,000 people at the game tonight. Maybe, and they might be, they'll probably be 75% BYU It'll be fans. the majority Cougar fans without question. Because there's a huge following in the Northwest. So can Gavin manufacture some of that energy that is so easy to grab onto in the Marriott Center on the road. Um, I, I don't know. I'm going to set the bar low. I'm going to say Gavin Baxter, if he gives me 8 to 10 points and I see 5 or 6 rebounds, a couple of blocks, I think that's a solid effort. But I expect Yoli Childs to have another big game tonight because you can't guard everyone. And, oh, yeah, there's this guy named TJ Haas as well. <laughs> so so what, what do you do? I mean, BYU's starting to show they have more weapons. Hello, yep. friend. <laughs> hey, do you, know, actually, do you actually hi. know that guy? No. Hi, buddy. Walk right on through. We don't mind. So the, the drive by. <laughs> Spence, Terry Porter and the pilots are 0-9 in conference. It, it kind of breaks my heart for him. I know that's you shouldn't because it's not your own team, but it, it's kind of sad. But for BYU, is, is this a trap game for them, do you think? No, I, I really don't think that BYU is overlooking anybody at this point, given what they have gone through this season, the ups and downs. I mean, it has been a volatile season for BYU, more so than any in the Dave Rose 
uh, era. So I, I am 100% bought in to the fact that they will be ready to play at Portland and not thinking that they're just going to roll in there and take care of the pilots. Um, Dave's got this team in the right mentality. He's got guys that are starting to peak at the right time. The last thing BYU wants to do right now being in second place is drop a game they should absolutely win tonight. They know what's on the line. They probably have to win 11 conference games to feel comfortable about having a shot at that number two seed in the West Coast Conference Tournament. You cannot slip up against Portland. The urgency, the almost desperation is there. They are aware of it. They know it, and I'm okay with that. Some teams don't respond very well to it. I think BYU plays better when there is desperation and urgency and a must-win mentality. This is a game you absolutely cannot drop. I expect BYU to show up and play well tonight. Spencer, you're at the Marriott Center getting ready to call a game. Women's basketball uh, will follow BYU Sports Nation versus uh, the St. Mary's Gales. Uh, you're not done. We're going to let you go for a few minutes. You and Kristen Kozlowski will be back a little bit later on in the show for a preview of today's game. In the meantime, this will give you a chance to run up in the crowd with all those kids and sign autographs. Okay, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to sling it, guys. There go you go. Sling it. Sling, sling it or it. sling it. There we Which go. Uh, you decide whatever one it is. <laughs> Spencer Linton joining us from the Marriott Center again. Spencer, Kristen, myself will be on the broadcast of BYU Women's Basketball taking on St. Mary's. We'll hear from those guys coming up in uh, just a little bit later on for a preview. Ah, oh, good old Spence. Good old Spence. I love it. I love, Dave Rose said BYU's best basketball is ahead of him. So that I, I think he's right. I think he's not going to let them, you know, take this game I, for granted. I agree and, with Spencer. This is, yes, they're 0-9, but BYU is clearly the better team. Yeah. They were the better team in Provo, as you would expect. I, I fully expect them to be able to flex their muscles on the road tonight and get the win. Right. Coming up, can the women's basketball team bounce back after dropping two in a row? We discuss that and more. And is Jerem Jordan going to be arrested in Cuba? The greatest <laughs> tease we have ever mentioned. This is BYU Sports Nation. <laughs> Men's Hoops faces Portland tomorrow night in the Pacific Northwest. Listen to the game on BYU Radio at 11 p.m. Eastern time. Pre-game coverage begins at 10 Eastern. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Jason Shepard, Lauren McLean, with you. To refresh you on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines, we present our headlines for you again. BYU football signed four athletes yesterday on National Signing Day. Adding to the 14 players the Cougars signed in December, among the new signees yesterday were Luke Andrada, defensive end Cade Albright, running back Javel Brown, and defensive back Dimitri Gallo. BYU's 2019 recruiting class, according to Rivals.com, ranked number 100 in the nation. Men's basketball will play on the road tonight against Portland Pilots, who are currently 0-9 in WCC play. The game will be broadcast on ESPN2 at 11 p.m. Eastern time, and pregame coverage will begin at 10 p.m. Eastern time on BYU Radio. Stay up late with me. Get your Jason blanket. Shepherd. You know, sit in front of the fire, listen to the radio. <laughs> Greg and Terry like Nashif. The good old days. Yeah, that's right. Greg and Terry Nashif will have the call tonight from oh. Portland. BYU women's basketball playing St. Mary's today, 1 p.m. Eastern time in the Marriott Center. BYU 9-2 in the WCC in second place, looking to snap its two-game losing streak. Watch the game live on BYU TV immediately following BYU Sports Nation. Number seven men's volleyball lost their first match of MPSF conference play to number five Pepperdine last night in Malibu. Despite 13 kills from Gabby Garcia Fernandez, the Waves swept the Cougars 25-17, 25-19, and 25-18. The Cougars will try to end their three-game losing streak against MPSF phone number four UCLA on Saturday. Things do not get any easier uh, for BYU men's volleyball. No, they do not. Lauren, you ready to play What's the Chance? I would love to play What's the Chance. Let's play What's the Chance. BYU Sports Nation asks, what's the chance? What's the chance is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Number one, what's the chance, Lauren, Zach Wilson is ready to go day one of fall camp? I, I just I couldn't help but think of the song you keep singing from Jack Jam. I wish from those two were unlimited. Swapped. Yes, yes, it's still in my head. It was in my Twilight head. Zone. It was still in my head before the show started, and now it is now. Anyway, ninety five percent, ninety five percent chance that Zach Wilson will be ready to go because, like I said, when we listened to that shot again, he was a little bit like, "I hope to be ready by summer. I hope to." So, heaven forbid, he's not. 
but there is that small chance he's not ready. And heaven forbid something else happens to him. But I think I think he's too determined. I think he's too confident. The guy's in really great shape. He's young. I think he'll recover quickly, and I think he'll be ready to go. Yeah, you went 95%. I'm going to say 99%. I Mm. certainly expect it, but I'm always going to give myself a a little bit of an out by not saying 100%. You never want to guarantee anything, but but I I certainly – for a lot of the reasons you mentioned in terms of we just know how hard he's going to work in order to be back. I I just, I really will be shocked if he's not ready to go, you know, for the day one of fall camp. Yeah, I agree. Number two, what's the chance one of the members of the BYU signing class is next year's bowl game MVP? (laughs) It happened this last year. It did. It did. Zach Wilson was the bowl game MVP and he signed the BYU Tigers. But even I don't know. That's that's it's super rare. So I'm going to go with ten percent. That's that's just a rare thing to happen. But something I didn't mention at the top of the hour. I love the prospect of Dimitri Gallo, the the JUCO transfer that can come in and make an immediate impact. Ed Lamb was raving, raving over this guy and his technique, and he said, "I can't wait till he comes in and teaches the other young corners." Uh, some of his techniques. So he's a guy defensively, I think possibly if he comes in and makes immediate impact, could be the, the bull MVP. You never know. And he's the guy with the, with the glasses, right? Yes. He's, yes. The gr- great, <laughs> great picture with the glasses. The, the Jeffrey Dahmer well, it's, he, glasses. It, it looks like Von Miller. Like Von Miller's yeah, got his glasses. True. And, and yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, it, it's just an awesome look. Yeah. It's an awesome look. Like you went 10%. Yeah. I think it's low. I'm going to go 15%. That's asking a lot from, from a youngster. And I understand Zach did just that, but I think the chances are pretty low that somebody is going to come in immediately and make that big of an impact. But I mean, again, you never know, but I, I think it's pretty small. I'll say 15%. Number three, what's the chance Gavin Baxter outscores Yoli Childs again tonight in Portland? I'm going to go with 45%. Portland, I'm sure, as we talked about, has scouted out Gavin by now. But Yoli is still the same dominant force for BYU. And they saw what LMU's double team did to stop Yoli. So I think... I think there's a decent chance that uh, that Gavin can outscore Yoli if that same thing happens, you know? I just don't think Portland can do what LMU was able to do with, with yeah. Yoli. I'm saying 25%. Yoli not being the leading scorer is super rare, as we mentioned with our stat of the day. It's either him or TJ Haas, and our stat of the day, if you missed it, was you know only two times this entire year – has a leading score been somebody other than Yoli and right. TJ? It was, it was the last game against LMU and the first game of the year against Nevada. I, I, I fully expect Yoli to be back at the top tonight. And that doesn't mean Gav can't have another right. impressive game, but I think Yoli bounces back from his six points that he had against LMU. Yeah, I think so too. I, I just, and again, I think it boils down to not only will he be motivated and, and play better and, and bounce back, I just don't think Portland has enough. They're a guard-oriented team. They're they're not great defensively, so I I just think Yoli bounces back and he'll be he or TJ, but probably Yoli be your leading scorer. Definitely not the same defensive team as right. LMU. We're we're not going to be seeing the same thing. And when was the last time that Yoli Childs had six points? It's been a long time. It, it has been a really long time. It, you're right. It, that's not going to happen again. Yeah, he's going to turn it around. I've been waiting for this one. I'm so excited <laughs> for this one. Oh man, number four, Lauren. What's the chance <laughs> Jerem Jordan causes an international incident while in Cuba? Now let's give a little bit of a backstory. Yeah, we got to give some context. Yes, to this. so so Jerem is on a cruise, and one of the stops along his cruise is Cuba. <laughs> so at some point, and maybe tomorrow, he's going to be in Cuba. Hence, Jerem Jordan causing an international incident. What is the chance, Lauren? You think we're really stretching for storylines today? No, we have a plethora. We have a plethora of storylines. We really we just talk wanted about. an opportunity That's to take a shot at Jerem. That's how much we wanted to talk about this. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to say 50. percent Jerem has an affinity for maracas and fresh fruit. I hear, <laughs> and those those are plentiful in Cuba. And I could see him trying to sneak something out. Okay, you know, bring it home and put it on the set here. He gets taken down to the ground. Maracas. You know? Yeah. Oh. Yes, I want to see that. Chef, what do you think? Uh, I wanted to say 100%. I'm going with 75%, and I'm going for this reason. The only reason I'm saying 75% is because I think there's a 25% chance he is so seasick he can't get off the boat. <laughs> that is, he is one of those patches on the side of his, of his temple. Have you ever been on a cruise? Yeah. Okay, so you, I have not been on a cruise. I, get, I can get carsick just driving if I'm in the back seat. I don't know how I would do 
if it's I'm It's a little more a soothing. It's a little slower. But, yes, people do get car, car sick. No, seasick. Seasick, yeah. yeah. So that's the only reason I'm saying 75 I like it. It's a good answer. Our question of the day, what is your takeaway from BYU's football signing day? On Instagram, the uh, Fongolian? Okay. <laughs> the coaching Fongolian. staff is taking seriously the need for more athleticism by signing some speedsters and quick juco transfers. Mm-hmm. I, I think you've seen that since the, the not just the new coaching staff, but it, there's been a, a pivot, if you will, towards faster, speedier players, especially corners, you know, players, in obviously running or uh, wide receivers. Uh, but yeah, there, there's definitely been more of a focus on getting those, those players that are more athletic and that can really run. Yeah. Luke Andrada is one of those guys, yeah. one of those signings I'm excited to see in the jet sweep. Yeah. That Jeff Grimes is so which was prominent. It was less prominent once Zach took over. Yeah, that's true. But certainly it's part of the BYU offense. You can join in on the question of the day. Use the hashtag BYUSN. Join us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Coming up, coming up, which former Cougar is currently golfing it up in Panama? And Spencer Linton just can't stay away. He joins us again this time with Kristen Kozlowski. They'll join us from the Marriott Center. This is BYU Sports Nation. What's the Chance is brought to you by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Women's basketball hosts St. Mary's today at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Watch the game live on BYU TV immediately following BYU Sports Nation. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. She is Lauren McLean. My name is Jason Shepard. This is our question of the day playing off of football signing day yesterday. What was your takeaway from BYU football signing day at BYU fan CJ? Hashtag blue goggles, excited for the new guys and RMs coming back just like every year. Some will pan out, some won't, but look forward to the surprises that become household names we don't expect to if you read recruiting reports. That is the fun of it. Beyond Mm -hmm. just getting these guys here and the excitement surrounding that, it's who's going to pan out and which name. You know, we've been talking about the preferred walk-ons and return missionaries that maybe guys – you know, people have forgotten about, and it's fun to see who's going to be the surprise player. There's, al- there's, there's always, always one. is. There, there always, is always is a surprise, surprise player. You can chime in on the question of the day, 24-7 on social media. Use hashtag BYUSN. All right, joining us again from the Marriott Center is Spencer Linton, and this time he's brought a friend, Kristen Kozlowski, who will join Spencer on the broadcast. I'll be over there after the show uh, to run sidelines. Guys, today it's Kids Day, which we've talked about, but it's also a pretty important game for BYU women's basketball. Certainly, Jason, and one, we need to class up the joint, so we bring in (laughs) Lauren McLean in Studio B, (laughs) and we bring in Kristen here to the Marriott Center. So, needless to say, I think we've upped our production level. Uh, (laughs) We're we're off to a great start. Um, I do want to address the, the importance of today's game, Jason, which you brought up. I mean, Kristen, this BYU team was riding high. Nationally ranked for the first time in seven years. Alone in first place at the West Coast Conference over a top 20 Gonzaga team. And then they go on that tricky Southern California road trip, lose a heartbreaker at LMU, and it just kind of seemed like it spiraled from there. Like there was just a a negative wave of emotion carried into Pepperdine. Now they come home. What kind of BYU team do you expect to show up today after unexpected back-to-back road losses? And that's the hard part is you can't let two and a half months worth of work just go down with that one week. It was one down week. I think BYU's refocused themselves. They've had really good practices this week and talking to Coach Jenkins, he feels like they're going to learn from this, rebound, and be able to move forward. And obviously, it's a hit that they didn't want to take. They were sitting in a really good spot being up against one game on Gonzaga, which now Gonzaga moves to that first place spot, but they're still in a really good spot. But this is so crucial to now win every home game. So when you look at the standings, BYU right now is, again, a game behind Gonzaga. The Cougars, you would think if they have any shot at a a share of a conference championship, they probably need to win out. And that means winning in Spokane, which they've never done since joining the West Coast Right, right. And that's going to be the toughest one. I think realistically, they're not going to get that game. That will be one that they'll go down. So maybe three losses of what you're looking at. They're looking ahead to postseason. What do we need to do to get to postseason? Obviously, they want to situate themselves in the WCC tournament with a good seed. 
but what is needed to be done so that they can make postseason play. Now, the St. Mary's team is uh, nothing to gloss over no. <laughs> because BYU had to sneak away in Moraga late. The Gales made a late run in that game, almost stole that one back. But BYU needs to show up today because aside from Gonzaga, this arguably is the, the best other team in the league. Well, they top the league in every single offensive category. They're in the top 10 in the nation in field goal percent, three point percent. So BYU has to come out, use their size, because they're going to have an advantage inside with that size, but they have to execute on the defensive end. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see BYU and St. Mary's match up again in Las right, Vegas. Right. Uh, as part of one of those semifinals for a chance to get to what we think will be a Gonzaga in that championship game. Okay, Kristen, if you had to establish keys to the game really quickly, I know we're going to go over this when we get to the live broadcast, but what's one key for St. Mary's to try and sneak away and tie this season series up with BYU and another key for BYU in contrast? St. Mary's has struggled. Their Achilles heel is those turnovers. So limit the live ball turnovers. That means BYU off and running, top the key usually. So limit those live ball turnovers. And then for BYU, second chance points. Hit the offensive glass hard and create extra opportunities. Okay. Uh, Kristen, would you like to... Uh, say anything to the folks back in Studio B. Hey, because you guys are doing a great job. Keep it up. We love you. Thank you, Kristen. She's, Thank waiting you, Kristen. For her, she's waiting for her turn. Yes. Thank you, Kristen. You I'm have beautiful hair. <laughs> <laughs> Come join. Great. All right, we'll see you at the top of the hour. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate yes. it. Spencer Linton, Good Kristen luck. Kozlowski. They'll be on the broadcast. Top of the hour, BYU women's basketball taking on St. Mary's. Coming up, we'll give you an update on the softball team's game down in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And is there a forecast of hail for the upcoming baseball season? <laughs> More about that in The Whip. This is BYU Sports Nation. Shout out to today's guests, Spencer Linton and Kristen Kozlowski. If you missed any of today's show, you know where you can go. You can always download the podcast on BYUSN.com to check out the entire episode. Let's whip it. It's time for the Cougar Whip Around. Football signed four athletes yesterday on National Signing Day. That included athlete Luke Andrada, defensive end Cade Albright, running back Javel Brown, and defensive back Dimitri Gallo. In case you were wondering, according to Rivals.com, BYU's 2019 recruiting class ranked number 100 in the nation. Volleyball. Number seven men's volleyball loses their first match of MPSF conference play to number five Pepperdine. Dang it, the wave swept the Cougars 25-17, 25-19, 25-18. Men's basketball. Cougar Hoosters on the road in Portland tonight taking on the 0-9, that being in conference play, Pilots. The game will be broadcast on ESPN2 at 11 p.m. Eastern time. You can listen on BYU Radio. I will have pregame coverage beginning at 10 Eastern. Women's basketball. They play St. Mary's today at 1 p.m. Eastern time in the Marriott Center. The Gales sit at 7-4 and four in conference play, while BYU sits at 9-2. and two. The game will be broadcast right here on BYU TV after this. Baseball. BYU senior outfielder Brock Hale has been named to the All-West Coast Conference preseason award watch list. He was made to the All-West Coast Conference team. Also, BYU baseball picked to finish sixth. Softball. The Bat Chicks are playing in South Carolina right now in Puerto... They're not playing in South Carolina. They're playing South Carolina right now in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. They lead the game 3-2 in the sixth inning. Cougars in the PGA. Daniel Summerhays is tied for 41st in the Panama Claro Championship. He finished his first round shooting at one over par. Today's... I always love doing the wow. golf. I love the golf. I'm so angry when I don't get that one when we when we rotate. That's a great way to end the whip. It is. Too, it's very it's very calming. Today's rise and shout. How about we give it to the families of the BYU football coaches? Today uh. they officially get their spouses back. They get their dads back. They get their uncles. Uh, the families get their coach back today for a little bit. Some of them might not like that. <laughs> they you never say, know. You know what? That's a little too much. When do you go back? <laughs> when is spring football? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. March can't come fast enough. Our, <gasps> our question of the day, what is your takeaway from BYU's football signing day? At Colonel underscore James 83 says, some will have an immediate impact. Others will have an impact later. My hope is that their BYU experience will add for these young men to always be honorable, faithful, and true. Mm. How about that? Nice. Like that. You know, and it, that goes to what we were talking about throughout the entire show. BYU, when they go out and recruit, there are certain standards that are not negotiable. 
They want guys that can abide by those and want to be here. Those are the guys they're looking at. Right, and I, I think Jamal Williams is such a good example of that, just going out and representing BYU as a non-LDS kid yep. who said the, the honor code changed me. You know, it changed him for the better. So hopefully we can see more of that. The Elite Voice of the Day is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort, celebrating 50 years at CL underscore living. I already signed my national letter of intent to cheer for whoever BYU plays or plays for BYU years ago. There we go. Regardless wow. of who it is, he's all in. I like it. I'm right there with you, man. The conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. Download the podcast on Google Play and iTunes. For Lauren, I'm Jason. Shout out to Mackenzie Pulsifer. BYU Sports Nation back at it tomorrow noon Eastern. BYU Women's Basketball coming up next. 